Hey everyone, welcome back to Aliens on Toast Gaming and welcome back to another Dino Dossier Spotlight and Analysis for the Isle. And this time we're having a look at the Baryonyx. So we're finally on to the type of dinosaurs that people are more likely to be playing a lot. So we've covered kind of the first tier dinosaurs, so now we're looking at the third. Um, so we'll be looking at the Baryonyx and the Utah Raptor and the Dablo, the Maya, all of those types of dinosaurs that people spend a lot of time playing. Um, so this is the Baryonyx first off, and Baryonyx was a freaking sweet dinosaur. I loved this guy when I was a kid. He wasn't my favorite dinosaur, but I just loved the concept of this guy. I remember having a dinosaur book that was aptly named Dinosaurs, um, that I really, really loved, and there was just this awesome artwork from that book that just depicted the Baryonyx just hunting for fish in the most badass way that I've ever seen a Barry drawn before. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. Let's have a look at the Baryonyx and have a look at this dossier. So, the discovery of the Baryonyx was by... Carig? Charig? Uh, call it Carig. If I butcher that, please uh, update me in the comments. Uh, et al, which means it was him and or her and a whole bunch of other people in 1986. So he wasn't actually that old uh, or that long ago when he was discovered lived around in the Cretaceous period, which was 120 million years ago, uh, and the word Baryonyx means heavy claw. Uh, and you can see that because the Baryonyx has some freaking sweet rippers just up here. Uh, those would be used for catching fish or larger herbivores or even carnivores uh, and grappling them to the ground. It's not going to be swishing its head back and forth and hoping to get uh, dinosaurs or fish impaled on its teeth. It's going to be using those claws for most of its fishing. Uh, having a look at its vital stats, we get a good picture of the profile view of the Baryonyx. You can see that he's got that thin snout that is indicative of most fish-eating animals. Uh, and I'm speaking modern day and prehistoric, so if you look at modern day birds, if you look at modern day crocodiles, they're all going to have that very thin pescatarian mouth shape. Uh, even uh, mammals to some extent will have a thin snout. Um, if you have a look at otters, they have a very short snubby face, but their teeth and their mouth itself is actually quite thin, which is good for kind of tackling fish. Um, the uh, what is it? The, the canine teeth on those guys are super sharp and they're just going to pierce into a fish or a mussel or whatever they're hunting uh, and pry it open. They've also got a good crushing bite as well. But it's just really cool to see um, like how animals all adapt in similar fashions to go hunting for uh, similar prey. Uh, so the dietary requirement for a baryonyx is it's a carnivore. It's a piscivore, which means it's going to be relying on fish as well as herbivores and carnivores. Uh, its length is 9 meters, which means it is the biggest dinosaur that we've reviewed so far. Its height is 2.8 meters, which is 9 foot, uh, which is actually really interesting, which uh, according to the dossier makes this guy shorter than the Osteoraptor. So now that I'm reading that, I'm thinking that there might have actually been an error with the Osteoraptor dossier saying it was 3.5 meters, I believe. Uh, or maybe I read that wrong. I'll have to go back and have a look. Uh, but 2.8 meters means this guy is big. This is a large dinosaur. It would have no trouble taking on a human. Would they cross paths uh, in game or outside of game? Um, <laughs> the weight class for this guy is large. It's 2.5 tons of muscle and teeth and just basically killing instincts. Uh, its damage type is bleed, bite, and claw, so it's the same as the Osteoraptor. You can see why they were put in the same kind of class, uh, in the same progression tree. Its visual acuity is it's got good night vision, so it's not able to see as well as some of the other dinosaurs, especially some of the other uh, carnivores. This guy is going to be doing a lot of day hunting. It's going to be relying on its size to be able to bully things off corpses, or uh, fishing out in the open, in the sea even. Um, and, and it's not going to be hunting at night, not going to be relying on ambush and that kind of technique. Its sense of smell requires further study, as does all the dinosaurs, but I'm assuming it's got a pretty damn sensitive sense of smell if it's going to be a predator. Um, hunting for fish does not necessarily require a good sense of smell, but if you think about bears, if you think about the way they hunt down food, uh, they're not necessarily stuck to eating salmon, but during the salmon run season, they do use their impressive sense of smell to find fish that have been left behind by other carnivores, um, or most commonly other bears. 
Um, so it's possible that the Baryonyx is going to uh, behave the same way and use its sense of smell to hunt down corpses and that sort of thing. Its temperament is aggressive territorial, so this guy is going to attack you even if it doesn't really have much need to. It's best just to avoid him. Don't go hunting for a Baryonyx because it's going to go hunting for you. Uh, its overall stamina is its a medium metabolic rate, so it's not going to have to eat that often. But I'm guessing when it does eat, it eats a lot. Uh, so similar to the way bears eat, is they don't eat little tiny thing and little tiny thing and little tiny thing. If they find something big that they can just gorge on, they will. And they'll just survive off that for a little while. They'll build up that fat reserve and they'll live off that for a bit longer. Um, having a look at the dinosaur's tail, uh, a lot of the fat reserve will probably be in the top half of the tail. Uh, that's where a lot of lizards and even birds that still have that kind of tail structure will store excess fat. Um, it's why it's such a bad thing when skinks and other lizards lose their tail, is because they're losing that extra fat reserve that they rely on if times get tough. It's why if you ever try to pick up a lizard, you've got to try and pick it up in a gentle way so that it doesn't lose that tail, so that when you put it back down, it's not going to be screwed should the worst case scenario happen. Um, of course, dinosaurs are not going to be losing their tails because they also rely on the bottom half of here, which is all muscle and sinew and all of the structure that's going to help drive these large dinosaurs forward and balance them. Uh, because they're upright walking, they're going to be relying on this tail here for balance, for actually maneuvering through tight spaces, and there's going to be some vital organs in there as well, at least some vital uh, arteries and stuff that are going to be carrying a lot of blood to that tail. Um, also, some dinosaurs probably would have used their tail to actually balance out their temperature to, if they're in a hot environment, maybe to cool themselves down. If they're in a cold environment, maybe they bring some of that blood back in from the tail to warm up some of their other organs. Uh, so it's going to be a temperament, uh, temperature gauge. Um, but let's have a look at its territories. So Baryonyx is small enough to be capable hunter in woodlands. With less intervention from larger predators, it is one of the top dogs here, able to bully lower tier predators such as Ostroraptor and Herrerasaurus out of a meal. And that's very true. You see it even in the game today. Baryonyx will just scare off an Ostro if it's happened to kill something. Or even eat an Ostro if it happens to get in its way. A Barry has no objection to eating an Ostro because food is food. Um, hunting in the woodlands is not going to be particularly useful for it. If it is uh, like hunting for fish, you're going to need to get to lakes and large open areas where it's going to be able to get to a large quantity of fish. Um, it's not going to be living off minnows and guppies and all those smaller fish because it is such a large predator. Um, it'll be eating a large quantity of them, but not a large quantity of small fish. Um, but let's have a look at the prey items. Um, so hard to catch, little resistance, one alone will not sate hunger. So none of these three, so the taco, the dryer, the galley, will actually keep a baryonyx that full. It'll have to eat multiple of these, multiple of those, probably one or two of those, um, probably one of these. So we've got a kind of scale here. We go from hard to catch, little resistance, doesn't fill you up, to easy to catch, moderate resistant, fills them up nicely. And we've got the galley kind of in the middle here. Uh, but if you happen to take on a Maya, and that is a feat, if you can take down a Mayasaurus as a Baryonyx, you are doing yourself very, very well. Um, quite often you will find a dead Maya rather than having to hunt them, because it is a dangerous game to go hunting one of these guys. They can defend themselves. Um, so, let's have a read though. This is a close relative of Sucomimus, however it is a much weaker swimmer. This makes it less suited to fishing. With more of a brutish build, they often go after small to mid-sized herbivores, ranging from Dryosaurus to Platyosaurus, and they are more than big enough to scavenge slash steal the kills of smaller hunters. Uh, so there's some really interesting things in here. So, uh, unlike what I've been saying this whole time, they're saying that the size and weak swimming attributes of the Baryonyx make it a shit fisher. Which, I, I'm not 100% sure I agree with that. Like, in-game, sure, why not? Because it's their game. Uh, out of game, though, it's been proven that, you know, it, it was quite a good fisher. It uh, hunted in the shallows, of course. It didn't go swimming out to open water. But um, Baryonyx did go fishing. It, it was quite capable at hunting those large fish. 
Uh, but also, the second interesting thing is it mentions the Platiosaurus here, which I don't think has been mentioned anywhere else in any of the dossiers. Um, so Platiosaurus could be a dinosaur in the future, I'm not sure if they plan on implementing that, or they're just stating that it could take on one. Um, I think Platiosaurus is a little bit bigger than a Maya, but probably less defensible. Um, the Maya has, a, of course, its speed and a ramming capability, whereas the uh, Platyosaurus would be very similar to the Kamara in the fact that it's it's going to be kind of slow and sluggish and just relying on its size to keep it safe. Um, but as we can see, it does steal the kills off smaller hunters, which is something that a lot of Barrys will do nowadays. Now, a lot of Sukos as well, they won't bother killing their own food, they'll just steal the kills off smaller ones because that's safer, that's easier, and that gets the job done. Okay, let's have a look. So, the combat notes for this guy. So, I love this picture here. I think we've seen it once before in the, uh, I think it was the R, maybe? I don't know, I don't know, maybe you haven't seen this before, but I have definitely seen this picture before, and it is a sweet action shot of a baryonyx stalking a flock of unsuspecting Dryosaurus. And you can see that this Barry, he is ready to go. He is, he is about to lunge into this fray and take on possibly multiple dryers and get himself a nice meal. Um, and those dryers, even from my point of view, they look quite tasty. Um, but the Baryonyx came from a line of fish eaters, but took a different path. It is much better adapted to land predation with muscular legs for chasing prey. Both its jaws and claws can deliver killer blows. Like most theropods, they rely on ambush tactics. And being the runt of the Spinosaurid family tree, it must avoid hunting large prey or taking on large predators. That includes its bigger relatives, Suchomimus and Spinosaurus. So they are saying that the Baryonyx has taken a different path uh, in the game, which is really interesting. Like, I, I'm not going to combat it. I mean, sure, it is their game. Um, and it's, it's interesting to say that, th that it would use ambush tactics, even though at the moment it's not much of an ambush predator. Uh, it does have muscular legs, but it's not quite fast enough to implement them. It do I don't even think it can get away from a Um So, like, that is pretty detrimental to its survival. Um, but it's interesting that they've taken that on, that they've, they've said it, it's not as good at fishing as it, it could have been. Um, though it does uh, come from a fishing tree. Uh, and eating dryers is quite a tasty way of surviving, in my opinion. I mean, I like hunting dryers. I don't know anyone who doesn't. Um, so surviving that way is not a bad way to survive. Uh, and here we have the overall view, the profile, or the side view of the, the beastly Baryonyx. And I love the way this guy's drawn. I love the menacing spikes on the back of the head, even though they don't like actually do anything in game. It always just looks so sweet, and I love that end of the skull and crest area here that has the spine works through. It's just very nice. Um, so let's have a look at the defining trait, which is those killer claws, and they're better adapted for preying on land animals. Uh, Baryonyx possesses a set of muscular forelimbs with large killing claws on both hands. So in-game he doesn't actually utilize these, I'm not sure if he ever will, but that's very cool that they kind of readapted this guy to taking on uh, land animals rather than fishing. Uh, it has a small crest on its head, a very small, you can see that crest is tiny. Look at that little bump on the head. Then go bit by bee. Uh, it's got a long flexible neck, muscular build, strong legs, which it definitely has. The Barry has some of the most thick legs I've ever seen. Uh, I think it's pretty, pretty comparable to the Suchomimus in leg size, even though it is quite a bit smaller. Uh, so it, it would, should theoretically be able to trample its way through most undergrowth with pretty much ease. Um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of what sides of that they will put into effect, whether they will have really, really thick woodlands like they've got at the top here, or whether they'll stick with kind of the Redwoods approach and have everything very open and accessible to all predators and all carnivores, uh, and all herbivores. They can get anywhere. You can get anywhere as anything. Um, it has got spiky growth running along the spine and tail, so that is these spikes. They're not particularly good for defense or for offense, but they do add a menacing physique to this dinosaur. And its long tail does help it keep balance. 
So just for show, though covered from head to tail with dorsal spine, these afford little protection. They do, ha however, give Baryonyx a suitably menacing appearance. So I didn't even read that, and spot on. So the Baryonyx is damn menacing. It is a sinister looking dinosaur, and it is awesome. Uh, it's one of the dinosaurs I just love the look of more than anything else. I don't particularly like playing this guy because he always feels slow and sluggish and very easily, like, well, you can take down a Barry with little effort as a larger carnivore. Um, so I like playing as this guy as a transitional dinosaur. I like getting to the Suko and then the Spino rather than playing as a Barry specifically. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to leave this episode here. This has been the Baryonyx in this dino dossier spotlight and analysis and i will see you guys next time thank you very much for watching and bye <laughs>